Frankenstein's Aunt by Alan Rune Peterson. Igor. The old lady rapped on the glass of the ticket office, and a shadow appeared on the blind behind. The blind rushed up, and the hatch opened, and the station master looked out. He was a thin man with a shiny bald head, a green shade on his forehead. Yes, he said in a thin voice, scratching under one arm. The old lady noticed that there was a half-empty bottle of sherry on the counter. I hope that's dry, she said, pointing a long bony finger through the opening, or at least medium dry. The station master stared and hurriedly hid the bottle as if he had been caught drinking on duty. I prefer sweet sherry, he said a trifle self-consciously. Then his voice sharpened. Is there anything I can do for you? He fiddled irritably with the green shade and scratched under the other arm. If there's a telephone in the ticket office, I should be grateful if you would call for a cab, said the old lady. A cab, said the station master grumpily. He did not consider it his business to telephone for cabs at half past eleven at night. But he stretched out his hand for the telephone and sulkily wound the handle for the operator. What was the name? Hannah Frankenstein, the old lady said slowly, articulating very clearly. The man's eyes widened under the green shade. The next moment, the ticket hatch had slammed down and the blind was pulled. Hannah Frankenstein saw the shadow of the blind on the blind, taking a great gulp of sherry straight from the bottle. She was just about to knock on the glass again, determined not to stand for any more of this nonsense, when someone touched her arm. She turned around. A little old hunchback was standing beside her, his yellowish-white hair hanging down, soaked by the rain. He was looking up at her, smiling a worm-eaten smile. "'Perhaps I can be of service,' he said. "'And who are you, my man?' asked Hannah Frankenstein. "'I am Igor,' said the hunchback, smiling his worm-eaten smile again. He tapped a bull's in the side of his neck with a dull, bony sound. "'They tried to hang Igor when he was young, but Igor survived.' He said, Igor always survives. And how old are you now, Igor? said the old lady. I'm 99 in February. Then you were old in Henry's time, said Hannah Frankenstein. And you're still alive, are you, you old joker? Igor survives everything, said Igor again. Can I be of service to you? Well, why not? Hannah Frankenstein looked searchingly at the little hunchback. He had been a trifle unreliable in her nephew's time, muddling some vital organs and that kind of thing when they had been making the monster, but perhaps he would be able to rustle up a cab. She told him to do so. The worm-eaten smile appeared for the third time. Hannah Frankenstein decided that if she were going to have anything to do with Igor in the future, she would have to send him to a dentist. "'Igor has his own cab,' said Igor. "'Come with me,' he gestured for her to follow him and limped away into the rain." In the darkness behind the station was a hay cart with large wheels harnessed to a massively th- to a miserably thin old nag. Hannah Frankenstein could see the dripping ghost-like contours of the equipage in the light of the lamp. So you call that a cab, do you? she said. A hay cart. That's no hay cart, madam, said Igor with a smile. It's an old executioner's wagon. I got it for next to nothing at the auction when the executioner in Ingolstadt died a year or two back. How practical, said Hannah Frankenstein, and nice. Igor flung her cases up into the cart. Careful, she said. Where to, madam? Igor hauled himself up, surprisingly nimble for his age, then stretched out a bony hand to her. Where do you think, said Hannah Frankenstein, plumping herself down beside him on the wet hay. As the cart got going, creaking and squealing, for a moment she had an unpleasant feeling of being on the way to her own execution, but she waved the thought away as imaginative nonsense, put up her umbrella, and lit a cigar. "'What do things look like up there?' she said. "'Not too good. They blew up the laboratory and the castles in a bad way.' "'Oh, that Henry,' said his aunt. "'Making one monster, that's just passable.' But then to go and make a bride for the monster, I think that's taking things rather too far. Yes, what the village that's what the villagers thought, but it was Dr. Pretorius's idea, said Igor. Yes, yes, I know all that only too well, said Hannah Frankenstein. I remember getting a letter from Henry saying how happy he was to have met Dr. Pretorius. And as usual, of course, he wanted to borrow money. Otherwise, he never wrote. I wrote back at once trying to warn him. 
that Dr. Pretoria seems to have several more screws loose than you have, I wrote. But Henry wouldn't listen. As usual, he was never one to heed warnings. No, Dr. Frankenstein was not a man to be afraid, said Igor in a dreamy voice. That he wasn't. Henry was not only unafraid, she said in a loud voice, but he was also terribly unwise, irresponsible and immature. He's always been the black sheep of the family. Igor cleared his throat and said more cautiously, <clears throat> How is he nowadays? The last I heard from him, he was thinking of emigrating to South America, but I hear he's still in some unknown place in Europe. Isn't he thinking of coming back? He's no doubt careful not to, said Hannah Frankenstein. He's no doubt careful not to. They had left the village now, the last houses disappearing into the darkness behind them. The rain was pouring down harder than ever now. A great streak of lightning lit up the countryside, revealing that they were on their way up into the mountains. In the bluish-white light, Hannah Frankenstein could see the road winding its stony pothole way up ahead of the house, up ahead of the horse, behind between high cliffs and dense pine forests at the top, crowing or crowning the wild scene. The castle suddenly came into view, illuminated by the next flash of lightning. A derelict, ghostly fortress with dripping walls. The roof collapsed. Ragged clouds chasing around it, its windows black as empty eye sockets. And that's the end of that chapter.